February 18th, 2001. The dawn of a new era in NASCAR is upon us. Clear skies and a sunny day at the Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's early in the morning, but it's packed in the garage area as teams make final preparations. These cars have been built and tested the entire offseason, some even longer. As morning turns to noon, over 100,000 race fans from across America and even the world are jam-packing the Daytona International Speedway. They're anticipating this to be one of the best 500s ever. The millions of fans watching at home agree. They'll be watching this one from a whole new perspective. It's Fox Sports first ever NASCAR telecast. They're seeing familiar faces in a much different place. NASCAR fans are usually not as accepting at first to change compared to other sports fans. Fox Sports knows this and they want to put on the best possible broadcast for the Super Bowl of stock car racing. They showcase this during pre-race, highlighting Dale Jarrett's golf skills, interviewing Joe Gibbs on how he went from a legendary football coach to a legendary car owner. And finally, the Intimidator showcases his fun side as he takes Terry Bradshaw on the ride of his life in the official Daytona pace car. The future president himself, Donald Trump, is in attendance. This would have been Adam Petty's first Daytona 500, but in his place is his father, Kyle Petty, continuing the 45 legacy. Other drivers are chilling pre-race, including Dale Earnhardt. In this pre-race interview, he says you'll probably see something you've never seen on Fox. A brand new revolutionary super speedway package is in effect for the first time. This was put in after the snooze fest in the previous season's 500. The positive effect it has had during speed weeks is undeniable. Lead changes were up in the double digits, and it was looking promising that the 500 would have more. Fans are ready for the Super Bowl of stock car racing to commence. The Daytona International Speedway is sold out, a record crowd of over 100,000. The drivers are set to go racing. Pre-race favorites include pole sitter Bill Elliott, The Intimidator, the race winner from two seasons ago, Jeff Gordon, and finally last year's winner, Dale Jarrett. For the first time since 1976, Dodge returns to the grid and takes up the front row. The 2001 Daytona 500 is officially underway. The Dodges showcase their strength early on as they hold the first three positions. Bill Elliott and Stacy Compton work together as Bill Elliott is able to lead the race's first lap. Pretty soon after, Sterling Marlin retakes the lead for the second lead change in three laps. The crowd goes nuts as Dale Earnhardt Jr. is able to take the lead from Marlin going up top. Unlike last year's Daytona 500, the pack is racing close together. Sterling Marlin is able to retake the lead with some help on the bottom. Fans are quickly realizing that those super speedway breakaways are a thing of the past. This was going to be a 500 unlike any other. Oh yeah, it's 2001, which means the yellow line rule does not exist. Dale Sr. is able to take his first lead of the race from Sterling Marlin with some help from his old rival Jeff Gordon and his son. We are not even 25% into this race yet and we already have more lead changes than last year's. The racing throughout the pack is intense, but thus far it has also remained clean. The first 48 laps ran caution free. The first caution comes out on lap 49 after Jeff Purvis, one of the final cars to make it into the Great American Race, smacks the wall. The first yellow flag pit stops commence. For the first time, teams are able to make adjustments. Once they were able to do this, the adjustments began to kick in during the second run. The action on track compared to last year's is night and day. The lead changes are on track to becoming a new race record. Just past the halfway point, we begin to see the first cycle of green flag pit stops. Ward Burton, perhaps the fastest man all speed weeks, leads them down. But all of a sudden, a random Goodyear tire rolls out in the infield. You want to know what NASCAR does? They decide to keep letting them race. In today's NASCAR, that would definitely be a caution, but 2001 was a much different time. At this point, we are a little bit over 75% through the race. The second caution flies on lap 158 when rookie Kurt Busch, who had competed full-time in the truck series the previous season, checks up on veteran Joe Nemechek on the front stretch, ends up hitting the wall and sending him all the way to the infield. After that second caution, it was go time. With 77 laps to go, this aerial shot was shown. 
three by three by three by three by three. But with entertaining racing comes very entertaining consequences. The biggest fear with all the tight racing this aero package provides is the big one. The driver's biggest fear and the fans' wishes came true. The Chaos collected 19 cars, some of them being race favorites. Tony Stewart, the Rushville Rocket from Indiana, in only his third season of Cup Series competition goes for one of the wildest rides in Daytona history. To the relief of many, nobody is seriously injured. However, Stewart did get his bell rung. In the meantime, this was followed up by a long red flag delay. A small fraction of the field remained. The race is coming down to the wire. With 21 laps to go, the restart commences with little E up front. But with 17 laps to go, the race winning move was made. Michael Waltrip, a journeyman driver who had made 462 Cup Series starts, was now in the best position for his first win. As the laps wound down, his teammate Dale Jr. and his new car owner Dale Sr. followed suit. A team that was only formed a couple months ago is now leading the biggest race of the year. Michael's wife at the time, Buffy, is losing it on the pit box. The Fox Sports cameras keep panning back and forth to her and Michael Waltrip's older brother, NASCAR legend, Daryl Waltrip. Earnhardt Sr. is content with riding in third, protecting the lead of both his cars. Dale Jr. is also content with running second, helping his teammate, but if something slips up, he's there to pounce. All of this excitement has now led to the final lap of the Great American Race. Make that back straight away wide, buddy. Get all over the place. Don't let them run up on you. Come on, man. Come on now. Watch it, mirror. Watch it. He's going to make a run inside. Block him. Block him. That a boy. Three wide behind them. You got him, Mikey. You got him, man. You got him. Come on, man. Come on, baby. Come on. Get him in the fold. Get him in the fold. The three cars out. Oh! Big trouble. Oh. Big wreck behind them. Lead him back. Come on. To the flag. Come on, Mikey. You got it, man. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. How about Dale? Is he okay? Schrader has climbed out of his car. He and Earnhardt have crashed together. He turns three and four. Look at Buck. You may have got me on Saturday, but I got you on Sunday. Daryl, is this better than winning it? No, it's better. This is great. I just hope Dale's okay. Yeah. I guess he's all right, isn't he? Oh. Michael Waltrip takes off the helmet, drops the window net, and he's about to get the best ride in racing. Man. The Daytona 500 victory lane. My daddy would be so happy. Man. Michael Waltrip has won the Daytona 500. Tears running down his cheek as he comes to victory lane. We'll be right back. The entire country is stunned. Michael Waltrip, the most lovable loser in NASCAR history, is finally a Cup Series winner. And in the biggest race of the year nonetheless. Teamwork scored the victory. The 8 and 15 crews go on pit lane to celebrate. Waltrip visits Daytona Victory Lane for the very first time in his career, and his older brother was there through it all to commentate. This was about to go down as one of the greatest Daytona 500s in history, or it could have been. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. We all uh, did everything we could for him, but he had what I feel were um, life-ending type injuries at the time of impact, and really nothing could be done for him. President's Day, February 19th. 2001. Nobody's talking about Michael Waltrip's first win. Nobody's talking about DEI's 1-2 finish. Nobody's talking about the record-breaking 49 lead changes. Nobody's talking about the exciting racing we saw. In the end, none of it mattered. Nobody won. Because the sport had lost its greatest driver ever.